All right, guys, we got a short break. Round three is all locked up. We are looking at a win and end match right here for round number four. We got Zach versus Trent. This is a win and end. We have, we have one table that is locked for sure, and we think two more tables are locked. So <clears throat> everybody had a little bit of extra time this afternoon, so we decided to do a, a cut to top eight. There's only 13 of us, but everybody wanted to play some more games, so we thought, why not? Let's cut the top eight. Let's play out top eight. So we're going to be doing a top eight cut today since we're a little bit ahead of schedule. And by a little bit, I mean like an hour, an hour and a half. <laughs> so we're rolling right along. Um, we're just, uh, we're waiting on these guys to get started here. It looks like Trent's going first. So Trent's going to roll a four ski here to start the game out here. And we're going to start off with a claw. I like that. I like that. Starting off with a claw here. Zach's going to do everything he can to try and uh, lead up life total a little bit. It's also worth noting that Zach is starting with 68 cards in deck and Trent only has, and Zach and uh, Trent only has 60. Yo, Max, what's up, dude? How are you, brother? You doing okay today, man? All right, into a CNC where Zach decides to take six. That is a really interesting decision and tells me that he must have something really good in his hand here if he's deciding to take six. That is like taking six on turn, like on turn zero is like very aggressive here. <laughs> okay, so we pitch in an E strike and a sink below to come in with red in the ledger for eight here. Death Dealer gives us the extra card, so we'll be able to arsenal one here. <laughs> I'm kind of intrigued that Trent decided to throw the CNC here on turn zero instead of like maybe arsenaling it. I'm going to assume he had a power card like Blood Rush. Uh, maybe an Alpha Rampage, like a, a pretty good power card here to hang on to, I assume is what we're going for. If he does have a Blood Rush, Zach's Red in the Ledger is really looking to like gum up that ability to like be able to throw, to be able to like use Blood Rush and really make good, good, um, good value out of it here. So really making, really waiting to look like, like Azalea just doing disruptive things here, just really good. Oh, it was a sink below that we decided to arsenal. So that also makes sense. Two cards and the sink below here to cover that up, which I think is kind of interesting. Oh, and he passes. Okay, so he gave up the extra card there so that he could arsenal the card he wanted. Another red in the ledger here from Zach, though. Man, like just arsenaling a red in the ledger, like absolutely crazy. Zach's really trying to put the pressure on as fast as he can here. Really looking to like push the tempo and put this game behind him as fast as possible here. Double red in the ledger looking really good. It is worth noting that like we are so early on in the game that this flesh bag has not been used yet. With two cards in hand, this kind of tells me that we're looking into Snapdragon Scalers right here. You could probably talk me into like using the flesh bag here, honestly, but it's really tough. Like... If you give two cards in Fleshbag here, you can like kind of shut down whatever he's doing after this. But then you have to worry about it next turn. Trent might just be content here with taking two, honestly. Like if we're just looking at taking two, like Trent probably does. Oh, another sink below. Okay. Yep. So Zach used snap snaps there. We cover this up. And we have one card in hand and one in Arsenal for Trent. Two cards in hand for Zach. Death Dealer to load in Infecting Shot. And then we're going to pitch Deadeye to come in with Infecting Shot here. So we're just, again, we're just trying to keep the pressure here. Keep the tempo up. We push through five points of damage and give Trent a Pox token here. Okay. Using Tunic and a Reinforce the line here to play Swing Big. He's also playing Reinforce the line into Azalea, which is really interesting. I think that's going to, you know, make Zach think just a little bit here about how he wants to play out the rest of the game here. Lace with Frailty and Fate for Scene. And Zach opts a card to the top. And then he gives another Fate for Scene. Wonder why he gave both Fate for Scenes and a Lace with Frailty. I assume Zach's going to give us just a little bit of info here on what's going on, because I don't really understand the thought process for that line of play. Even if he has a codex, he could have played the pump there. Okay, so he codexes, discards his last card. 
Why would we not have played the late Codex of Frailty? Or the Lace with Frailty there? I really have a couple of questions there about Zach's line in general. This was an interesting decision point here. Like, I'm curious to ask Zach after this about why he picked what he picked right there, because I don't understand why we didn't play either of the Lace with Frailties there. <laughs> yeah, Max, it's kind of my face as well, buddy. It's an interesting decision point. I wonder if we'll see two cards from Zach, or if he deems going to 28 is better to be able to keep his four-card hand. Command and Conquer has been a staple of Flesh and Blood literally since I started playing. I started playing in February of 2022, and it has been a staple ever since. This was the first like truly expensive card I ever bought when I got into the game. I bought Command and Conquers, and I bought Art of Wars to play Chain with when I got into the game. And if you guys have been playing for a while, you know Chain does some pretty dumb stuff. I apologize. Zach's actually going to 29, not 28 here because of the frailty token that Trent had. So we're seeing some trading back and forth here. We're seeing some like real back and forth game like gameplay here. We're like people like they're just kind of trading their big swinging blows here. So Zach pitches Codex of Frailty to activate Death Dealer to load in Remorseless. And now we're looking at making some decisions here. Lace with Blood Rot. And Remorseless for 8. Hmm. Makes me wonder if Zach's stuck with like two arrows in hand maybe. So, Justin, this is... So, that was Cole last round who said he doesn't normally play Azalea. This is... This is Zach. He... I mean, he plays Azalea like he's... He started playing Azalea about a couple months ago. So, I mean, he's pretty familiar with Azalea. Um, at least from, like, you know, like, my understanding of it. So, I think he's pretty familiar. But it's very possible that, you know, he thought maybe he had to have a card in hand for Codex. It is something that could have happened. I mean, you know, when you're playing... When you're playing, in the, you know, matches over the course of... You know, over the course of you know, a few hours, it's tough sometimes to know, you know, it's easy to forget certain things over the course of tournaments and weekends, so. So, Warmonger's Diplomacy here, really looking to put a damper on Zach's plan. And then Trent chooses to pitch his two cards instead of taking, um, instead of taking the two damage to Arsenal something there. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me. All right, we're starting off with five go again. Five from the, Ar like, E-Strike from the Arsenal here to play around Warmonger's Diplomacy. Very good. It's a very good line of play for Zach to have right here to play around the Warmongers. Wow, and a Ravenous Rabble. Man, what a turn for Zach to have Ravenous Rabble and E-Strike to play around the Warmongers. Absolutely insane here. Crazy. And he comes in for four. <laughs> Trent decides to go to 20. And now Trent has three cards in his hand and a tunic counter at his disposal. This is going to be E-Strike for seven. Yep. So... Throws E-Strike for seven here and he's going to look to Arsenal. We have yet to see Trent really have an explosive draw today. Like, Trent hasn't really, you know, like, in the games we've seen Trent playing today, like, he hasn't done anything with Blood Rush yet. Like, you know, I don't know how his other rounds have been going. Um, I know that Trent is 1-2, and two looking to... Uh, looking to get a win in here for this round, so... All right, so Trent's down two points. He still has all of his equipment block left, and we have our tunic counter available. It is worth noting that Zach has five cards coming into this hand. Four in his hand and one card in his arsenal. So Zach's probably looking to, like, play a bit of offense himself here this turn. The blue spire sniping is probably not what he wanted to see here, but 
he did arsenal it. I mean, he probably intentionally arsenaled it to set up the Skullbone cross wrap trigger and to see what two cards were on top. Read the glide path. Ooh, excuse me. So he read the glide. He re plays read the glide path to opt a card to the top of his deck. So he wants to sleep dart on top of his deck for next turn. I assume we're setting up. Rabble hits for four. Endless arrow comes in for seven. Dominate. Trent's going to give a card. I'm curious to see if he has a defense reaction in his arsenal here. Going to block seven. Plays one rainy boy. All right. So Trent's down eight points with three card and an arsenal here. Yeah, Rick, this is a good game. This is, this is looking, this is shaping up to be a very good game so far. There's a lot of back and forth here. Man. Trent cannot buy a roll today. I haven't, like, he rolled a four on the very first turn of the game, but, like, I have yet to see Trent have a good roll outside of that, like, at all today. I mean, swing big for 10 is pretty good here. If Zach blocks with two cards, it does push it back down to eight, so it is worth noting. Barraging beat down here, giving us two extra points that can be taken away. Barraging Beatdown is a really good card design, in my opinion. Like, it gives conditional buff, which is, like, a really good way. Like, it's a really good way to play the game, in my opinion. Trent down six. Zach only on a two-card hand in an arsenal here, so looking to see what he can throw together. E-Strike go again into Endless Arrow is pretty good here. I mean, it's a nine-card, three-point hand. Like, or it's a 9.3 card hand. Good lord. Nine cards and three points. That'd be a terrible hand, guys. <laughs> All right, we get a block from Trent. He goes to 12. I imagine on the Endless Arrow, Trent's going to give a card and scabs. No, he's going to give two cards from hand. Interesting. Okay. So he gives two cards and then play Warmonger's Diplomacy. Really hoping to like stunt one of Zach's turns here. Maybe we get like maybe like Trent gets lucky here and like Zach doesn't like have a, a way to play around it. It's just the one arrow he can throw here. Okay, so Trent blocks three pretty quickly there, telling me that his hand's probably not great. Like his hand's probably not doing anything super impressive here, if that's the case. Okay, so Zach has no play around tech here. So we're just looking at a pack hunt here. Really want to know what Trent has in his hand. This would be a time when knowing what Trent had in his hand would like really give us some more information here. Zach blocks. Okay. Trent arsenals and passes here. <laughs> so Zach chose to block with two cards instead of just playing the favor scene. I guess he really was valuing the opt off of Skullbone cross wrap there. Seek and destroy, seek and destroy. Spire sniping for nine. Dominate, man. It's a pretty good, pretty good uh, blue spire sniping there. I mean, not likely Trent's going to be able to cover this up completely here. I mean, even if he has a D react, uh, he'd have to have a D react from hand and a D react from arsenal plus the scab skins here. He could have eight if he had a card from hand, a reinforce the line and the scabs. Okay. So he is going to take two here. Fall down to ten. We have double Seek and Destroy active. Okay. We're looking at a Blood Rush turn. We've finally seen Trent play the staple card of Brute here. Playing Blood Rush Bellows for the first time here today. <clears throat> Excuse me. Excuse me. Ooh. And that's Blood Rush Bellow, not Bellows. This is my, my apologies there on the mispronunciation. So we have Claw. Are we rolling here, Trent? Using Tunic and Command and Conqueror to come in with Mandible Claw for five. And then we're going to Arsenal and pass. 
I mean, oh, wow. So he actually gets... Oh, no. But the second... Did he just Beast Within into a Beast Within to discard? Oh, my gosh. Trent's deck is willing him back to life here to try and do everything he can to keep a card. Now, Trent is down to six. We had a Pummel and a Sand Sketch plan. Wow. Wow. Trent on Yellow Pummel, though. That's kind of spicy. I like the resources from the Yellow Pummel, but I also like the ability to be able to, like, pump something up. Zach's only working with a two-card hand here. He has two cards banished face down for some reason. I don't understand why he doesn't have those cards back. Uh-oh. It looks like they're also realizing what's happening here. And they're trying to solve this issue. Wait a second. Hang on, I know what's happening. You guys trying to figure out the issue here? Yeah, what uh, happened? So, Intimidate says until the end of the turn. You were in his instep when he beast within twice and intimidated two cards. Oh, shoot! I have oh, never seen this plays. before in my life. He card and beast within twice I have at never the start of the end phase. At your end phase, which means you technically don't get your cards back, Zach, until the end of your next turn. Dude, I have never seen this game. ever. That might this save is crazy. Game. I literally was watching and I was Whoa. like, and I was like, why does Zach have two cards face down? And then it just hit me what happened. And that's crazy. The craziest that's thing cool, too, I saved the beast within and discarded it to the first trigger of uh, that one. Uh, what? Yeah. Oh, seek and destroy. destroy. Yeah, and then the second Seek and Destroy trigger, I drew into another Beast Within, no, discarded I know. that. I was losing my mind on oh camera watching it gosh. happen. And on top of okay. that, it took two cards for Zach's turn. That is, I have never seen that happen, ever. That's, That's crazy. crazy. What, yeah. I'm so glad I, this was the feature match. Thank God I caught this. Whoa. Okay, anyway, I'm going to go back to the broadcasting channel. I just, I, no, I no, saw no. this, and I wanted to tell you guys that I, I realized that what was happening. That helped us a lot, I think. Absolutely. We were so confused. <laughs> so, to my knowledge of like of card this is games, this is an, this is an accurate game state. That oh. makes sense. Uh, so, Gosh, yeah, it does. Anyway, anyway, I'll let you Whoa. guys get back to it. <laughs> no, no, awesome. no. Thank you. We needed that. That's crazy. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so you guys just got to see live what just happened. What a crazy play. I am so thankful that that was live on camera. I would never believe it happened if I didn't see it happen with my own two eyes. <laughs> okay, so Noel goes to... Or I'm sorry, I saw Noel's name in the chat. <laughs> Trent goes to two. And keeps the Blood Rush Bellow. Jesus. This is... This has been one of the craziest games I've ever seen. There's... Trent might crawl back into this. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. This is wild. Oh, Sam got you? Was actually such a good game? Oh, dude, I can't wait to hear about this. I'm sorry. Did we just go claw into Swing Big for 10? Wow. Block four takes six, go to three. Stay out of one reckless swing range, and you have one card in hand. This game has been so good. Drew, if you did not see what happened, I cannot wait to tell you about what happened here in a minute. Okay, so seven. So, man, that's a good two-card hand from Zach. If I was like, man, if he doesn't have another, another um, card, like another D-React here, he's going to be forced to uh, throw the beast within here. Well, you're going to get at least two cards from Zach here as well. Man, what a... Wow. What a trading game this has been. Jeez. I am, man, like, like, getting to commentate these games and see all of this happen, this has been awesome. Okay, D-React inbound here. D-React inbound. The crazy part about this game is that Zach is, like, slowly on his way to fatiguing Trent. I wonder if that's something Trent's thinking about.
Man, this is a tough decision. One rainy boy here could end the game. <laughs> okay, so it's not rain raisers. During your action phase. It does say during your action phase. Oh my god! Hey, oh my gosh, Lillian, hang on, we're gonna come back to this. Did Trent win this game? <laughs>